Hello everyone. Today's session will be about single sign-on to the Office 365 and Azure AD, Azure Active Directory. Um, so this is about center stack. So let's um, first go ahead and create a tenant because single sign-on is a per tenant concept. You know, tenant number one can have a Azure AD um, and tenant number two can have another Azure AD, so they are all independent of each other. And then a the tenant means like a you know my it could be called a client, you know my client. It could be called an organization, a company. So when you whenever you see tenant manager, you know that's you know managing my clients, managing my uh, the 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 organizations I'm servicing, and and th those are my tenants in the center stack system here. So for now, let's just go ahead and create a new tenant and then making sure the email matches a um, Azure AD or Office 365 account. I'm you know, later on going to be connecting the single sign-on to. So now let's just go ahead and finish the tenant creation process. So then we have an entity to work with like a sample organization, a sample client to show and demonstrate a single sign-on. So after the client has been created, so now let's just log in to admin at centerstack.com, which is the email, it has a mapping, uh, Office 365 organization and the account, that's the admin account. Um, in order to know who's who, so we're going to be creating a folder. Uh, because we are demonstrating single sign-on, so after single sign-on, you come directly to the files and folders view. So without a marker folder, we may not know, you know, who's who, you know, I'm logging as Joe, but you map it to my John's folder, right? So now we uh, created this folder. So then when we are demonstrating single sign-on, so you, when the files and folders you pop up, you know, you know, this is definitely my folder because I just created it. And in order to enable single sign-on, when we go to our side first, so single sign-on, we're using SAML, so S-A-M-L, so that's a standard in doing single sign-on. And it always involves two parties, the provider and then the, cons the consumer. The Azure AD will be the provider and then we are the consumer. So it's always a two-way setup. I trusted you and then you trusted me too. So it's a two-way setup. It's a little bit complicated, um, but that's because of the security that um, that's involved. So now let's go ahead and launch the Office 365 as well. So we can config both sides of it. Um, so both side has a metadata description describing what this provider is and then what the, what the consumer is. So we just um, launched the, our side of the metadata. So now we are going to be going into um, Azure AD. So in order to go to Azure AD, you log into Microsoft portal first, and then you go to the, I believe this is um, admin center. So you can go to Azure AD from the Office 365 Admin Center there. Um, and then if you go to the Active Directory, normally you are going to be seeing one and then I'm playing with the Active Directory. So, you know, I have two. So we are go, go just go ahead and create an application. Um, one little thing is Microsoft, uh, they cares about the name. Um, for example, there shouldn't be any kind of dash in between the name. Um, we didn't know that, so we created a um, a name with the dash in between. So later on, that you know that proved to be um, to be wrong. So, but we kind of keep it in, and and we'll take you through the troubleshooting process just to know, you know, because sometimes when you are configuring systems here, so there are two systems, right? There's the Microsoft system there, and then the you know our system here. So. Um, sometimes you don't know which system is wrong or maybe the configuration is wrong. So we keep that step inside. 
So now here is the Microsoft side of the metadata information. So that's the metadata describing what the identity provider um, endpoint is. There's also a SAML sign-on endpoint. So that will be mapped to the IDP endpoint. So IDP, that's identity provider. It's also a standard form, you know, IDP. So it's not like we, we make it short, you know, it's kind of, if you knew SAML, you know that's a standard uh, um, name for the identity provider. There's also a mapping because there are two systems here. You know, your name should be mapped to our email, and then your given name will be mapped to our first name, and then your you know, surname is going to be mapped to our last name. So there's some. So this is the basics of identity ma mapping, right? So it's kind of Machines may not know, you know, what's inside an XML or some kind of data exchange format, but now by specifying those field, then you know the machine will know who, you know, which identity is mapped to what field. And just in case, then we are also going to be taking the metadata from that app. So as you can see here, the single sign-on setup is per tenant, right? So there's a tenant in center stack that maps directly to Office 365. You are also logging into the administrator account there so you can set up both. So the app has been set up. We knew that the name has a dash that's going to be creating problems, but that's fine. Later on, we are going to be correcting that, but otherwise, all the parameters are looking good. You know, all the three field, the sign on, the app ID, the reply URL, it looks like they're all the same. Um, so that's good. And Microsoft has a like a portal entry page that um, you can see all your config uh, Azure AD app. So it's called myapps.microsoft.com. So that's a test entry we can use. So we will log into uh, Microsoft first using our own Office 365 credential. You know, even though I'm calling it an Office 365 credential, but it looks like it's just like a generic Microsoft identity platform. So it can be used to access Azure and other things, but not you know not in limited to Office 365. Um, as I'm talking here, I also, you know, look really hard at the app created, but it's, you know, just didn't show up, right? So back then I didn't know it's because of the name, because of the dash in between, but, you know, I was kind of, when I, when I saw that, I said, why, you know, why the other apps show up, but not the app I just created. So just trying to troubleshoot and see what's going on, trying to come in back and forth to you know double check triple check the names and if you are a system administrator you kind of you know pretty you may know how i feel at this moment that you know you config something and then it just doesn't show up but the other apps in the same organization just show up you know kind of why what's so special you know does microsoft has two different data centers to um synchronize is there a delay you know just kind of speculations to see what's going on um so the uh, we kind of walk you know off off track a little bit to show you this Microsoft problem because um, when you try to set the two system up you know sometimes um, it's not smooth right so the more kind of known issues you know you know even even if it's from Microsoft it's kind of it's going to make your life a little bit easier later on so. Um, so we are still troubleshooting, um, triple checking what the per per parameters and why it's wrong. So one of the things that, um, you know, during troubleshooting, it's always good is you know trying to simpl simplify, simplify the matters. You know, for example, you know, make less applications just by deleting the other apps to um, to see if it's because there's too many apps. Just kind of trying to. Um, Kind of untangle and make the the issue here you know simpler um, by deleting some of the applications and then just by deleting some of the applications you can see how responsive the um, the Microsoft My Apps portal updates so then you can know you know if 
um, it's a real time update, right? So uh, we deleted some. So now that's, you know, only have one, you know, one SSO, two SSO and three SSO show up, right? So now there should be three, um, okay, so two show up. So that just by deleting the, the apps, it kind of shows confidence that yes, you know, that portal is showing the right organization, the apps in the right organization. So now, um, you know, we can kind of, I think at this moment, you know, I kind of, it kind of led me to think about the name. So I'm kind of trying to find a way to change the name. It's not obvious, but, um, eventually I'm going to find it. So, you know, I'm still looking for the name to change and there you go. So that's the name. So. Um, I want to get rid of the dash, so just you know, why not just get rid of them all, get rid of them all, and so um, so if you did ha didn't use any dash, your single sign-on setup has been done. But um, there you go, you see the center stack shows up right away, right? So without the dash, it just shows up. Um, so this is a Microsoft issue, but um, just good to know. Um, this is technologies, right? So what? You know, what to expect. So, um, as you see there, the oh, we just click through. It may be you know going too fast. So then let's do it one more time. Close everything, and let's just go to the Microsoft um, portal, the My Apps portal, and um, see if the single sign is working. So let's just go to uh, admin at centerstack.com and login one more time. And that's our single sign-on portal. Do we see center stack? Yes, we do. Click through. And um, you see your files and folders right away. And then also you see this marker folder. This is admin at center stack folder, right? So, so now we are seeing that's our folder. This is single sign-on. Thank you.